This is a help video for the Laplace analysis scheme in Circuit Tutor, level one, problem type two. So we'll go ahead and enter that game. And of course, we presume as always that you've watched the introductory tutorial or done the introductory tutorial um, under the Laplace impedance simplification game, which contains a great deal of uh, important information for doing these exercises. As always, we would recommend that you start by viewing examples at this level, uh, but for the uh, sake of doing this quickly, I'm going to go ahead and uh, go right into the game. Okay, so in the previous problem type, we had a couple of voltage sources. Now we're going to have a couple of uh, current sources. Here's our circuit, and we see that uh, we do indeed have two current sources. We can also observe that there are two nodes in the circuit. There's a central node here, and then an outer node here, which goes all the way around. And we can also observe, uh, just for starters, that there's going to be a second order circuit since we have a resistor, capacitor, and an inductor, and we have a SOT current. Our first task, as always here, is going to be converting, converting this to the Laplace domain, the complex frequency domain. So to do that, we'll start with the capacitor, for example. We remember that a capacitive impedance, if we have a two farad capacitor, that's going to be one over SC. So that will be one over the quantity 2S. Again, the two and the S both have to be in parentheses there in the denominator to make sure they're all in the denominator. Then for this current source, the I1S of T, that's three U of T, a unit step function. And we know that the standard uh, Laplace transform of that is just going to be three over S. And if for any reason you don't remember that, um, you can always look it up in the Laplace transform table that's available here. Then for the I2S of T, that's 2U of T. And again, that's the standard unit step function uh, transform, which is 2 over S. And finally, for the 2 Henry inductor, um, that's going to be uh, SL, which is just 2S. And the program has already converted I naught of T into capital I naught, which is a function of S. And so that's been done automatically. And the resistor also stays the same. So now we go ahead and check everything. And that is correct. So I'll wait for that to redraw on the screen in the PLOS domain. And it is going to advise us here that because we have these two current sources, and since there's only two nodes in the circuit, as I pointed out, they have to be in parallel. And since current sources are in parallel, that means uh, we know that they can be combined. And so we're gonna do that first in the circuit editor so that we can then do a simple current divider on the remainder of the circuit, which will make things uh, simpler than if we use a brute force method. Okay, so now we're in the circuit editor here and we have to observe um, how these current sources relate to each other. So this one is pumping positive charge from the outer node up to this central node. Whereas this one is doing exactly the opposite. It's pumping positive charge from the central node back to the outer node. So it's clear that these two are actually fighting each other. They're cross purposes rather than helping. And therefore, um, we're gonna keep the larger of the two sources, which makes it easier to maintain its polarity. Um, and we're gonna have to subtract these two values uh, because they are fighting. So three over S minus two over S is of course just one over S. So we'll change that value there. Um, and the other current source now needs to be removed, but to remove it, we need to set it to zero amps because we put its current over here by reducing this current. And therefore this now needs to be zero current. And remember that if we made that a short, that wouldn't be zero current at all. It would be zero voltage because large amounts of current can go through a short. So that would be very much incorrect. So instead we need to change this to an open circuit, which is what has zero current, because again, this is a current source. So to do that, we can just either use the delete key on the keyboard, or I could right click here and go down and, and click delete there. So now uh, we've combined those and I'll check that combination here on the form. That is correct. And of course, there's also a help button there if you ever need help with the uh, circuit editor. 
And now um, that's as much as I need to do. I could combine these two impedances in parallel if you like, um, but since I can accommodate up to three impedances in circuit tutors formulas for uh, current dividers, I'm just going to leave it like this for right now. Okay, so we're going to click Done Editing to return to the main screen. Okay, so now because we do have two nodes, as we pointed out, there's still just two nodes, we will select single node pair analysis as the appropriate uh, method. And the type of equation we really need to find is just the SOT current, or SOT branch current specifically. Um, if we selected a more complicated method, it would really just tell us to do this because with the current divider formulas, this is all we need. <clears throat> okay, so we'll select the I naught. We're gonna enter a value for that equals and now I could use either of these two terms, probably conveniently. Um, in this one, I'm gonna be entering impedances and ohms in the relevant slots, or with this one, I'm gonna enter admittances in Siemens. So I think I'm going to do this since it's a little bit more natural for a current divider, uh, at least in my opinion. So now we need to put in the current source value here, which is I1S, so that's just one over S. But also, very importantly, we always need to check the polarity. Anytime we're doing current or voltage division, it's very easy to make a polarity error. So we think about what's happening here physically. This uh, source is now pumping charge from the bottom node here to the top node, and then it has to go back. So it, some of it will go back this way, some will go back here, and some it'll go back here, all getting back to the bottom node. But the charge that goes this way, which is relevant to I naught, is going in the opposite direction of I naught. Therefore, that's going to be a negative current as far as I naught is concerned in terms of that reference direction. So we do need to put in a minus sign in the prefactor. Um, otherwise, that would be marked um, incorrect. We can't put it up here because admittances are not allowed to be negative. Okay, now um, these fields are admittances. We can tell that because they show the unit to be Siemens rather than ohms. Remember that Siemens is a reciprocal of an ohms. And also remember, just for notation purposes, the, the admittances are called Y, which are the reciprocal of Z, which is the impedance. Um, so now we need to find the admittance, for example, of the element of interest, because in a current divider, in terms of admittances, it's the element of interest that goes in the numerator. So that would be um, the uh, 2S element. But remember that that's its impedance. And in order to find its admittance, we have to take the reciprocal of that. So we're going to write 1 over parentheses 2s, so that's the reciprocal of the quantity 2s ohms, and now that puts it into Siemens because we've taken the reciprocal. Then we can take that same expression and copy that down into one of these slots in the denominator, because now we're going to add all three admittances in the denominator, which is how a current divider works. And so the next one I could put in the 1 ohm, well that's easy to take a reciprocal, it's just going to be 1 Siemens. And then for the capacitive uh, admittance here, or well, the impedance is 1 over 2s ohms, so taking the reciprocal of that, of course the reciprocal of a reciprocal is just the original value of 2s, so that's going to be 2s in Siemens, again just the reciprocal of this value. So now we've done that, we'll just click check equation, and that is correct, it's been printed here. And now we're done entering equations because we have everything we need for our SOT variable, so we'll click no more equations. And now it's going to tell us we have to enter a more explicit value for this in simplified form. And so it's going to give us the screen to do that. Also, it's going to remind us that because we are going to be doing, in the next step, a partial fraction expansion in order to get do the inverse transform and get back to the time domain, we do need to factor any quadratic terms that are going to appear in this expression. And we will have a quadratic term here due to the denominator because we have, again, a second order circuit that's going to be uh, have quadratic uh, poles. Okay, so to work that out now, we're going to do that on paper here, and I've done it over here, uh, starting right here. So the I naught is negative 1 over S, and then I've just removed the units since the Siemens are going to cancel out, and this is going to be amps, uh, we know. So I just dropped the units here, and we have 1 over the 2S quantity, 1 over 2S in the denominator, and then the 1 and the 2S. So now, to simplify this, we never want to have fractions inside fractions, 
So we'll multiply both the top and the bottom of this fraction by 2s. That will clear all the other uh, fractions that are there. And so multiplying the top by 2s gives us just negative 1 from here. So that carries over. And then of course we still have the s. And then multiplying um, then the 1 over 2s by 2s, of course, just gives us 1. So that becomes the term over here. Multiplying 1 by 2s gives us this 2s. And then multiplying the 2s by 2s to clear the fractions gives us 4s squared. So I've written that here. And notice I put these in descending orders, of, or descending powers rather, of s, um, which is the conventional way to write a polynomial. So, and that's required by circuit tutor. Okay, so that is our uh, expression, but again, it did tell us we have to factor that. So in preparation for the factoring, to make it a little easier, I like to rationalize uh, the denominator. It's not something you have to do, but it's probably advisable. So I'm gonna divide both the top and the bottom by four to make the coefficient of the s squared be one. And so dividing the top by four, we get negative one fourth or minus 0.25. Um, the s carries over and then now 4s squared, uh, dividing out the 4, that gives us s squared. Dividing 2s by 4 gives us 0.5s. And dividing 1 by 4, of course, again, gives us a quarter. So this is sort of the rationalized form where the coefficient of s squared is 1, which is a little more convenient for doing the factoring. Now I have to find the roots of the denominator so that I can factor it. So of course, that would be the quadratic formula to do that. And remember that the standard form that I always recommend is that if ax squared plus bx plus c is equal to zero, which actually I forgot to write the equal zero there, but uh, the solution for that would be x equals to negative b over 2a plus or minus the square root of that same quantity squared minus c over a. So um, using that formula then, we find the values of s, the roots of this quadratic term as minus b, which is the 0.5 divided by two, the a is just one here, uh, plus or minus the square root of that same quantity squared, uh, minus the c over a, which in this case is just the c value of 0.25. Now, you might observe um, that this is going to actually be negative inside the square root because this is going to be smaller than this um, due to the two uh, denominator. And so we can do that in a calculator still. And if we're in complex number mode, that will give us minus 0.25 plus or minus j 0.433. Now remember the units there, I forgot to write, but that's inverse seconds because that's um, like e to the st, for example. The st has to be dimensionless. So this is always in inverse seconds. Okay, so now we're prepared to write this in factored form. So we have the minus 0.25 divided by the s, and then here we'll factor that. So we write s, and remember we have to write it now plus this value, plus 0.25, and then for the top uh, value, it'd be minus j 0.433. Again, if we didn't do that, when we put in the value of the root, that wouldn't make this equal to zero like it's supposed to. So we have to be sure to do that as you always do in algebra. And then uh, for the uh, second value with the lower sign here, that becomes S plus this value again. Uh, and now it's gonna be plus the J times the 0.433. So uh, that is the properly uh, factored form. So now we're gonna go ahead and enter that in circuit tutor. And we can also use fractions if you like. So um, for example, I could write negative uh, one slash four for the numerator, and then use another uh, fraction to get into the denominator. Um, and then I'll have to put a square bracket since we have multiple terms in the denominator that multiply each other. Uh, again, you can't use parentheses on the outside of parentheses in this case, um, except when you're enclosing uh, numerical fractions. So here we're gonna have an S and then parentheses um, and then we have um, s plus 0 0.25 minus j 0 0.433. Close that parenthesis. And then the uh, last part is s plus 0 0.25 uh, plus the j 0 0.433. And I'll close the parenthesis there and close the square bracket. And again, I could have used uh, 1 fourth in the denominator here. So I could put that in if you prefer. Um, that'll just get converted to a decimal. So we didn't have to actually do the arithmetic on the calculator. We could just do that. It'll save you a little time. Um, and so now we'll check that, since it does appear to be correct. And you see it, it automatically converted them into the decimals. So that's been written this way. 
And now it reminds us that we need to now do the partial fraction expansion to get back into the time domain. So here, um, it's put us in that analysis mode and I have to select the only option, which is a partial fraction uh, expansion equation. And so now we'll select the I naught of S, which is what we're expanding. And again, we're not going into the time domain yet. We're just still in the, in the uh, Laplace domain. So that's equal. And then we're gonna need terms here. So notice that we have three uh, poles in the denominator, a complex conjugate pair here and a single one there. So that means we need three terms. So I'll put those in and they all are gonna have units of amperes because we're dealing with a sought current. So I'll go ahead and change the uh, unit option here, which is amp volts or watts, just to be amps. And I have to do that each term. Then we need to basically work out the partial fraction expansion. So again, I've done that on paper here. So this was our uh, factored form. So now we know that that's gonna be equal to some constant A over S for the first term. And then we're gonna have what I'm gonna call B over this second term, which would be here. And then we're gonna have, you could call it C, but I'm just gonna call it B conjugate because it has to be actually the complex conjugate of this. Um, and that's going to be um, over this term. Now, it is very important here about which way you label these. For example, you might think that doesn't matter, but actually it does, because we need to always pick the term that's S plus alpha minus J beta um, to call that our B constant here. The other one, that's the alpha plus J beta, will be the B star. If we were to mix those up, then when we use the formula for the inverse transform, we would basically get the wrong sign of the phase angle. Um, and that would give us an incorrect uh, answer. So it's very important that the S plus alpha minus J beta all be, always be associated with what I'm gonna call B or whatever letter you, you use to represent it, and this would be the conjugate of that, okay? So now to actually compute those constants, we will use the heave aside uh, method or the method of residues. So for example, to find A, we're gonna multiply everything by S. So that multiplies these terms by S, and then we set S equal to zero. That wipes out these terms, just leaving an A on the right-hand side. And on the left-hand side, well, it's actually probably more convenient for this purpose to use the unfactored form up here. So I'm gonna use this one as a little easier. And we, again, multiply by S, that cancels out this S, and then we have the minus 0.25. And then these terms become zero, since we're setting S equal to zero, and we're just left with 0.25 in the denominator. See, then we don't have to remultiply these uh, uh, complex conjugates, so just easier to do it this way. And then that gives us, of course, just minus one. Now to find B, uh, we're gonna multiply through similarly by its denominator, which is the S plus 0.25 minus the J, uh, this value. And then we set S equal to negative 0.25 plus J 0.433, so that again, we'll make this Thing that we've multiplied by be zero, so that wipes out this term, and it wipes out this term, and it cancels this term here. And so then, we to find B, we simply take the minus 0.25, divide it by the S value, where we're setting S equal to the negative of this, so that will be minus 0.25 plus J 0.433, and then this term is gone, and then this term, we set S equal to that same value that we used over here, so that will be the minus 0.25 plus J, etc. here, and then we have the remaining constants plus I'm um, uh, sorry, up here, plus uh, 0.25 plus J 0.433. And we see that the minus 0.25 and the plus 0.25 are gonna cancel out as they always do in this type of situation. Um, and really we could just put a factor of two in here if we want, but I've just left it like this. And this can be entered straight into a calculator that does complex arithmetic. And there is a video on doing that if you're not familiar with how to do it, uh, at least for the TI calculators. So doing that then, um, we would get um, in rectangular form uh, 0 0.5 minus J 0 0.2887, or in polar form, which the calculator can also provide uh, doing an easy conversion, it'll be 0.5774 angle minus 30 degrees in this case. Um, we need the rectangular form to put in the circuit tutor, but then ultimately for the inverse transform, we're really gonna want the polar form. Okay, so now we're gonna go ahead and enter these results into our terms here. So we have, first of all, a minus one. So we'll put a minus sign there and a one. That's over the S because this is our A value here. And then here, um, we're going to have the B value, which is the uh, 
is 4.5 minus j 0.287. I always like to write a leading zero there to make it easier to read. Um, and again, it, it can't be entered in polar form here. You have to do it in rectangular form uh, because it's a text box. And here, um, that's going to be the denominator, which is the s plus 0.25 uh, minus j 0.433. And again, we don't need parentheses around either of these because they have their own text boxes, so they're clearly being divided. And then um, we have to uh, fill in the corresponding values over here, which are just going to be the complex conjugate of this value, and this is also the complex conjugate of this value. So I can just copy this most easily, perhaps, um, over to here, and then do the same thing, um, the whole thing, and copy it. And then I can just change the j to minus j to avoid retyping everything. So that's going to be uh, a plus sign there. And then this bottom negative sign also needs to change to a plus sign. So we've taken the complex conjugate. So that's our partial fraction expansion. And now we'll just uh, press check equation. And that is correct. It's been printed here in formatted form. And so we're done with all the partial fraction equations since we only have one SOT variable. So now we'll click No More Equations. Now it's going to advise us that our next step is to enter the inverse Laplace transformation value in the time domain. And we can use a table that's going to be displayed. So here's that table if you need to access it. Um, and I'll just actually bring that up here. So the relevant one, well, first of all, of course, the, the U of T and the 1 over S we probably know, but the one that's a little more complicated is the one uh, that corresponds to these complex conjugate roots. So that's going to be the bottom entry here. So we have something in this form that matches what we had over here. And then the inverse transform is going to be 2 times the magnitude of this constant. So that I've already computed that as 2 times the magnitude of B. That's just doubling this value. So that's 1.155. And then we're going to have e to the minus alpha t. And alpha, remember, is this a number in the denominator. So that's the 0.25. And it's inverse seconds or its units, just to be complete there. And then the beta, um, that's going to be in the cosine beta t uh, plus theta. And that's the value here um, multiplying j. So that's the 0.433. Um, that's our beta. And then uh, since we're going to have to enter it as e to the negative t over tau instead of e to the minus alpha t, I've gone ahead and computed the tau value as 1 over alpha as 1 over 0.25 over seconds is just 4 seconds. So we've kind of done that in preparation. So now we'll select inverse transform there. And it's going to remind us um, that there are multiple uh, sets of terms there in case we don't find the ones we need on this palette. We just switched to the other, but um, in this case, they're all here. So we have our i naught of t, which is the inverse transform of i naught of s. That's going to be equal to. And then, because I need to have a unit step function everywhere in the time domain, I will use brackets to enclose everything and multiply it by one of those functions, which is the really the best way to do that. Um, and so now we're going to have a constant, which will be multiplied by the u of t. So we need a constant for the first term here. And then remember that we just saw the inverse transform of this is going to be that exponentially damped cosine term, which is this term here. And it's going to remind us that the coefficient of that should be positive out front to avoid sort of misinterpreting the phase angle. Um, so we'll keep that in mind. And now we just, uh, well, we need a closing square bracket and we need the u of t term always um, in the time domain. So we'll also put in the units, which are part of that term. And because it's a current, that's going to be the choice of amps rather than volts or watts. Okay, so now we're ready to fill in the blanks here. So we have um, the uh, the a value, which becomes a, the uh, multiplier of u of t, that's going to be negative 1. So I'll just put in negative 1 there. And then remember that the coefficient of this uh, exponentially damped cosine is going to be the twice the b value, which I computed here. So that's 1.155. And then we always want a decaying exponential. Um, otherwise, it would be an unstable circuit, and, and this circuit can't be unstable unless it has dependent sources. And then this is written as e to the negative t over tau rather than e to the minus alpha t. So that means we have to basically convert, as I already said, the, the alpha to tau by taking the reciprocal of the alpha value, which is this value here. 
So that's going to be four seconds. And then the beta value, as I already pointed out, is the 0.433 uh, radians per second. And then the phase angle um, is going to be negative 30. So actually, I want to put a minus sign there and then 30 there. And so that's the complete expression in the time domain. So now we'll go ahead and check that. And that is correct. And now uh, we're basically done. So we'll hit no more equations. And we'll go ahead, as always, and make a PDF uh, transcript of all the steps that we took that we can use later for studying or reviewing purposes. Um, and you access that from the review work uh, button on the uh, level menu. So you also have the option to get a complete explanation of everything. Um, so I'll just show that here for completeness. And it'll just take a minute or two to plot that. And that's going to start from the original problem in the time domain and just remind us of all the steps that were used to do the problem. So here it is in the time domain and then here it shows the conversion into the frequency domain. And in a moment here I'll be able to uh, scroll down and show the uh, combination of those two parallel current sources as explained here and then all the details explaining um, the remainder of their work here. Um, and also several alternative forms we could have used um, just for completeness. Um, so if you need to review that, uh, you have that option. Okay, so that completes uh, this problem. And again, if you wanted to review the work, then you would just click this button here.